So we say, we just say that we don't know where China is beginning. We know where the water more or less flow, which is the main direction, according to the drainage directions. But where do really China begin? There are several methods to understand the where China begins from the map. From the physical point of view, uh, the process is uh, kind of different in different places. Where you have a soil, for instance, in the, in the, in the Marin County in California, you have soil, you have below the soil, you have the bedrock. And uh, you say that the channels begin when the soil is eroded, and you have a, a distinctive pattern of erosion, a concave form with the head of the, of the channel. That is it. And here, if you look at uh, look out of the window here, on later on when we go to take a coffee, we go on the terrace and we look around, uh, the thing is not really like this, because you have steep slopes, and on the steep slopes you have uh, movement of, uh, you don't have essentially soil, you have maybe the tree, and uh, you see that the same nature of the channels more or less goes up to the top of the mountain, but you see this long concave shapes that start at the beginning uh, as a, a movement of, of mass movement, and then there is something that a certain moment starts. So physically, there is, uh, there is also this difference in, uh, in what, uh, where the channels really begin. Then um, we have to distinguish on the map uh, in some way. We are talking about, so let's say, more conventional ways to distinguish where the channels begin. So one way is just to say we estimate the area, we say that the channels more or less begin when the area, a certain, uh, certain area is uh, overcome. We have an area greater than a certain amount, and then we say the channel begins. Uh, the, the, the physics works with shear stress, with forces. So we can say that uh, the channels should be the begin when the water shear stress overcome a certain amount. In this case, anyway, the things become more difficult to treat because when we are talking of shear stress, we have to include water, the real water, the real movement, the real hydrodynamics, and the process can be complete, uh, more com complex because we have to understand if actually the water is infiltrating or not, is it, if it's going on the surface or not, and things like this. And the other thing is that we can use curvatures. Anyway, historically, the first approach, more or less, was, was this one. When uh, we discovered that we can uh, uh, subdivide the, the network, uh, we can estimate the, the, the channel, uh, the drainage direction in the A direction, and the, the thing was like this one. And so, Here you see also that you have these parallel features. These parallel features is, are an artifact on the fact that the, that part of the that part of the landscape is diverging. And uh, what Scott Beckham says here was, uh, okay, what we can do? Okay, okay, these are really artifacts. So start prune away, take away the. The first order, the, uh, the first order stream, meaning the one that starts from nothing. So we take away the blue one, for instance, and we prune it. And if we prune it once, then we are not satisfied, and we prune the second streams. 
the second northern streams being here, you have two streams that join and make a second northern stream. Okay, you prune away also this one. Okay, we are not satisfied. We go on. We prune the fourth, the fourth northern stream. Five qualitative, like I, I, I procedure. In any case, if we go to the four northern streams, what appears is a things like this one. Uh, superimposed, you have the, the contour lines, and uh, as you see here, you have this type, type of thing which are called in literature contour granulations. And uh, geographers before uh, working on the map say, oh, usually a, a channel head is going to start here. Dots are tiny here when you have a nose. But here, where, where you have the concave form. So it could, quite be, it could look quite reasonable. And at the beginning, the idea was that this method, more or less, was uh, resembling what it was on the map, assuming that the map were the true. Actually, the map are, uh, are the work of, uh, of uh, a, a, people that draw something and based on his experience or whatever experience is uh, saying oh here the channel begins there was not systematic anyway um, determining of that position on the channel head <clears throat> the other thing is say okay we take every channel where we, can, we say that there is a channel any time, uh, for instance, we, the contributing area is larger than 200 cells, like in this case. The appearance is a little bit different, but actually not so different. And in practical application, the difference could be hmm, a bit not so important, I would say. So if we take the contributing area as a representation of the, of the surface, so what happens is, uh, for instance, uh, we have this catch made. Above, on the top left, we have uh, 30 uh, pixels on top, then 100, then 500, then 1,000. As you see, from 1,000 to 500, nothing is changing really dramatically. So it looks like that the, the pattern formation of the river there is something inside the pattern that says that the pattern of the river itself is pretty stable. Here you change a lot of the area, but yes, you, some, something is disappearing, but, but not so much. While going from the 30 to the 100, a lot is changing. And probably the reality is between 100 and this one according to, to a real classification. Uh, we don't know exactly uh, uh, to how to quantify what I am saying now. But if we actually observe that there is a kind of a threshold in the accumulation flow that tell us that at a certain moment something is really changing and the, the little process is more stable, and uh, they are the chance. So if I would choose a, a visually uh, where the channels begin, I would choose something between 100 and 500. How can we say that this is actually the real network? It's just 500 actually here. Well, well, now we have a lot of methods that we can apply. But strangely, nobody applied. Uh, because probably uh, it's not so important. Or at least in this phase of the research, people think it's not so important. Uh, the, the real thing is that we can go take an image from a satellite and do uh, looks for uh, 
the surface where the surface is detecting where, for instance, we have a change of uh, color. For instance, where we have vegetation or where we don't have a vegetation, and try to do do image recognition and uh, work on the work on the images, or optical images, and then put together the geometrical derivation, the optical images to have a better uh, qualification of, of where the, the channel begins. That could be an idea, but practically I don't know anyone that did it. In reality, the channel, the, the work by David Montgomery and Bill Dietrich, the, in WRR in 99 shows what, what the, the, the beginning of a channel looks like. In a hill slope, in a soil mantled hill slope, it looks like this. Grass uh, everywhere, and here erosion. Actually, the mechanism here for starting erosion uh, can be, uh, it, it is a uh, is the same like, like a little landslide, and there the channel is beginning. Then the same uh, uh, Dietrich and Montgomery uh, observing the sketchment and observed that this head was moving. When it was uh, raining a lot, the, the head was moving upward. And then it was, uh, then between two rainfall, the soil was filling again the holes, uh, grass was again covering the thing, and so the channel, is, the channel head is moving uh, here and there. And actually we observed that uh, during floods, we can have, depending on the amount of water on the rainfall, and the duration of the rainfall, we can observe that some channels are activated. And there is uh, this project by a colleague of Padova. Um, uh, sorry for, um, as a colleague of Padova, ESC project that, that uh, is that, yes. Um, uh, and he is studying this going here, here, up and down all the things. This is a topic that is uh, going to be uh, important in the next year. So. Why this is going to happen? Why the channel is moving? The channel is moving because we can, uh, not much formulas actually uh, today, but this is one of the, the formulas we use. Uh, we, uh, we want to calculate the, the shear stress that the water is uh, uh, acting on the surfaces. So uh, the shear stress is the force per unit of surface. Uh, this is known to be proportional of what? It's known to be proportional to the discharge flowing to the, that place, meaning we have uh, more shear stress when we have more water on top. And the way is also increasing with the slope. Uh, as a surrogate of the discharge here, we use a uh, one, one parameter, which is just a geometrical parameter, which is the, the contributing area, which is AT on top, divided actually by B, which is, we have the whole contributing area, but for creating a channel, we have to go through a certain section. B is the length of this section. Maybe you can take it as uh, the, the la uh, length of the pixel as a first approximation, B. 
and A, so you have the contributing area, which is square meters, and B is a length, and so that, that quantity is uh, according to, is, is kind of a length. For the slope, which is dimensional length. And uh, here we don't have, in this formula, actually the, the real, uh, we don't have the real water here. We do have the uh, all geometric characteristics. Because our goal is to understand if the landscape contains written inside some, fe uh, some features of the, the hydrology. So this is a, can be a proxy, and we get, to, and this shear stress can be calculated with the, the GIS all over in a catch Unit of stress is meter? Sorry? Unit of stress is meter? Yeah. The, the unit, the, well, okay, this is a, a stress is a force by unit of surface, uh -huh. but here, uh, uh, in this case, it is a, a pro um, constant proportional that uh, put the dimension. So we need another coefficient to Yeah, yeah. there is, there, there is a, 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 a proportionality there, okay. term of proportionality, but you know, if what is really changing, suppose at least in a small domain, where the soil is not changing, where the type of uh, lithologic quantities are not changing, you can think that the coefficient that is in front of the left uh, uh, of the right side of this equation is more or less the same. So it doesn't it doesn't really count. Uh, this the variation, just the variation on this quantity. Here is giving you a visual impression of where the channels begin. So if we look like to those quantities, what happens? Here, there you have the divergent part of the in yellow. On top of the yellow part, there is uh, the, the divergent part of the of the of the, of the cache. Then we have, you, you see from the control line, you have convergence of water. So convergence of water means that the discharge is increasing, the contributing area is increasing. At the same time, not only the contributing area is increasing, but the, the same discharge is passing through a smaller uh, section. Because I should not this, but uh, because of it, you see, here we have, you say here you have this, all this contributing area here is going through all this line, which is essentially the B in the previous formula. Here the same, more or less the same area is passing through this line. So you have a concentration of discharge. A, a incredibly high accumulating of, uh, of stress from the point of view, from the hydrological point of view. At a certain point, the stress is so high in any case, and the concentration is so high that make the channels to be eroded at the beginning. So this is the headwater, and this is also a hill slope from the point of view of geomorphology, but it's more a planar thing that goes in, into an already formed stream. Now I think the, the, the things. So the process is like this. But, uh, what I am saying here, that what I was telling before, that when we, we, we change the, just the contributing area, I say, visually, we are observing that there is some threshold somewhere. They makes me, how I, uh, we, they makes us feeling that it's okay. This should be the, the river network, and the the, the process is by, driven by the, the the topography here, because you see where what you have divergent topography, nothing is really accumulating. But then when you have convergent topography. The shear stress is accumulating so much that 
that you have to start a channel. And then here, nothing really changed so, so much. In the first work of uh, Bill Ditch and Montgomery, they use this data they collect. They collect and they use it for the formula that, that I showed you before. And you have here various things. So you have the USGS blue lines, meaning the maps. You have uh, the combined thresholds. And, uh, and here you have just using a contributing area as a channel initiation. So you see that there are differences, and that the information you have to, from topography can be even more important than the information you have from maps, because it can, you kind of measure processes. Uh, we can go back on this topic here because of, uh, of the B the famous B that you have on the previous formula. And here I, I am just remarking uh, what the concept is. Here we have a pixel. Uh, at the beginning of the pixel, the water is entering on top from the left. And then we have a convergent topography. When the, the topography is really convergent, what, what does it mean? The, the water that is entering here at the beginning of the pixel, pixel over a length that is more or less the length of, of the side of the pixel is concentrated, concentrating in a much smaller area, much smaller length. So uh, the nice fact here is that this convergence is con uh, totally controlled by the topography, by the curvatures, the planar curvatures. So if I am able to calculate the planar curvature, I, am, I can use the planar curvature to estimate the concentration of water and kind of estimate the, how the term B in the previous formula here is. So that's the way we calculate our B. We take the pixel size, we calculate the curvature, so we, and we call it the curvature, we concentrate the amount of water we have on top just on, on a smaller on a smaller side. Applying this concept, we can calculate the term A over B total drainage area per, for unit length of concentration and what it, this is what appear, appear from just from the topography analysis. You see here you have clearly a catchment delineation. You can take a threshold over here to say for me that the, the catchment is starting here. There is a, a clear, this is a clear topographical signature in the landscape. And now because we have very, uh, very detailed topography, we can really do this. We can actually smooth, we have to smooth our, our best uh, topographical um, um, data sets because uh, they are so, we have a one meter by one meter side and we can see a lot of noise uh, on top of, of these things. But, you know, a concept like this one, joined with this one, put together a slope, contributing areas, and curvatures. The whole the set of uh, Geometric uh, uh, differential geometry we have. Said that there are some 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 other studies because uh, actually the concept of channel initiation uh, 
alla Montgomery and Dietrich assume that uh, there is a, a certain process of uh, uh, flow formation, meaning there is a flow accumulating that is going to produce some overland flow or, satu or saturating the whole soil mantle and then the soil mantle is being eroded. In some other situation, this cannot be so true because also because maybe there is a lot more of subsurface flow in some cases. For instance, because, because we have a bedrock and shallow soil and the water flowing on the bedrock uh, goes anyway in, on subsurface so far quite fast. And there is a study by Olandini and Brothers uh, in Italia and show that uh, here we have the real channel initiation in according to what was really measured in the field. And uh, the channel initiation described by a process of, uh, of a threshold like the one that we saw before. And uh, there is uh, some di discrepancy that is, in my opinion, still to be solved. So, yes, the previous thing is appealing, but sometimes it's not really working as we would like. Anyway, Dietrich's work was on a uh, soil mantle landscape in California, and this is on the Dolomites. So the things can be explained in this sense. So what we have to do? Go to the network, get the links in the network, uh, uh, when you 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 have get the links when in network or doesn't mean mean that we select where the channels begins for instance here and we go to the next channel this is a link we go to the next channel again this is a link so we have several link we number each link you give a number say this is channel one, this is channel two, this is channel three, this is channel four, and we go to see where, which part of the hill slope go to the, the, that channel. So we link any channel to his, to its islop. I was saying the channel is uh, male and the, the hill slope is a female. <laughs> And uh, the result is something like this. We have extracted the network with some threshold according to a criterion. And the criterion here maybe is, uh, is still the, the contributing area. And uh, to each channel link, we associate the area draining in it, either as headwater or side water. And uh, this can be the result of the subdividing a, a catchment in hill slopes. To be really true, we should have, uh, should, you should have divided even more than that, uh, distinguished between head catchments and lateral side catchments. Uh, head, uh, had a hill slope and side hill slope, like in this one. But we don't do in this case. So what we learn in this second part is uh, uh, to understand when the channel begins. Uh, we give a, a little of a theory. Obviously, the, is not the, the information I gave you is not uh, enough for understanding the whole stuff we you need to go back to the original paper or some of the paper i cited if you are interested uh, in any case i can do even more information but essentially uh, slope contributing areas and the curvatures can be used to uh, to detect uh, in a objective way where the channels begin this is kind of part of convention uh, how to extract the channels can be uh, can be also uh, done in function of what we have to do at, at the end. 
which is the size of the catchment we are distinguishing. We, maybe we don't want to distinguish all the hills now because this is too much computationally um, invasive. You have to, to, comp to do a lot of computation. If you have a, I don't know, the Amazon River, you want to, s to separate uh, each, each one each one hills off of the Amazon River, and we have uh, billions of uh, hills tops, and uh, we cannot deal with with, with, with those complexity. And uh, so we aggregate more, and uh, so there is some com can be some conventionality in how we extract the network. Anyway, when we have extracted the network, we can identify. The, the sub catchment that go in each link of the network, and we have partitioned the, the, the basin in parts like, like these ones. And uh, th this is important from our point of view because then we will use each, each one of these parts, each, each part that we conventionally call a hydrological response unit, mm -hmm. like a single unit where we extract a one single data set. For instance, one discharge here at the end of, of each color, one temperature for the discatchment, uh, one evapotranspiration value. We can do even more than one if we want. We can subdivide more, but the essential, the simplest uh, the, um, tiling of the catchment is, is this one that I, I, show to, I show to you. So we can stop and do maybe a little of